Hello, welcome back to Blendish Life. In this episode, I want to show you a kind of workflow to create and generate this type of imagery. Uh, I'll explain uh, the process kind of backward. So these are some of the results. I'm using Blender and DrawThings AI app to create it, to create this. Uh, the idea is to, to generate some kind of random depth and then use the depth and the text prompting to generate infinite kind of robot design okay so yeah it's pretty easy I think I explained this in the past before but it's just much easier now and we can do it with SDXL which is stable diffusion XL model and yeah these are some of the results I could um, let me generate maybe four while it's running and ge keep on generating so this is the app called DrawThings app. It's available on iPhone, iPad, and Mac OS, but you can also use the online online versions. Just search for SDXL control net depth. So, and you supply the depth and you can run it and you can generate uh, any infinite ideas you have, you know, like just text prompting and the depth. So let's take a look at the workflow. So this one is kind of like midway. I created this random 3D, which is just a bunch of boxes kind of clumping together. And I thought, okay, this could be like a, like a shape of a robot, right? I could make it slightly, it, currently it's like mirror, so it's symmetrical, but I just keep it simple for now. And I'm using uh, Blender cycles, I think to render and then I'm outputting the depth and infer the color, normalize and output the depth of these objects, like random objects. How do I create this random object? So the, the whole process is pretty simple. I'm using Blender 3.6.8. So you can, you can use this version of Blender or newer version. We have the default cube here. I can just leave it there. And I will use add cube. So this is the process. So uh, the process really, I want to have random boxes, but I don't want them to be overlapping. Okay. So we just generate boxes like this. This is the probably more like 3D therapy kind of thing. You don't really have anything in mind, but you know you will generate something in the end. And it's gonna be like, kind of like a artful looking thing, hopefully. Uh, but at the moment it's just like random boxes. Okay, so what's gonna happen next? Let's delete the camera. We have the default cube, we, we have the light here, we can delete it as well. Select all the box using A and then select another box so we, we need to have this active selection and I will be using this dynamic place okay remember this one if you go to check under preferences place helper okay this add-on is super useful uh, we can use this dynamic placement and just you know you can do drag I will be using scale and I will turn this convex hull into box so all we need to do is just to scale and scale out scale in we can we can use graffiti to just drag this just you know connect that you can duplicate this and just make graffiti make them connected just send it there and we have something <laughs> That's kind of clump. Uh, we can use scale again, scale out, scale in, make them kind of clumping and nice. And if you want, you can add more cube. There's nothing wrong when doing this. You just place objects on top of each other. Oh, it's a little bit like Lego. It's a little bit more abstract than Lego. Now we have something selected, 
and then A, dynamic placement again, scale, oh, actually, scale, and then scale in. We, we, we kind of want to have like abstract shape that you're happy with. Let's say you are happy with this. Let's observe this in color, random, save this, random blocks. I mean, you can use any techniques to make random blocks, but I think this is kind of fun. And let's save this and then command J and then mirror. Okay, you can use bisect and flip. Well, okay, actually, uh, if you tap with the selection, you can, you can rotate it until you're happy with the shape. So it's more like, kind of like a mecha kind of robot or whatever, you know, it's a more like, more or less like a mecha robot. And it's like, a, and then you can start using your imagination, start drawing on top of this, or let's see, in this case, I will convert this into mesh and then remesh. You know what I'm going to do, right? Convert to mesh, sculpt it, and then use the cloth filter, inflate, inflate. So you can inflate out, inflate in, you're gonna have some detail okay and now all we need to do is just to render this out for our depth shift a create camera view align active camera to view this is going to be let's use cycles 1024 by 1024 And we want to render this with depth, depth. So under here, let's see. Turn on Z. Go under compositor. Use nodes. So this depth will be outputted into the composite. Let's use normalize. And also invert this color. And if we render this using maybe sample of one, where is it? Minimum sample, maximum sample. Okay, maybe let's make this 10. Render. And we're gonna have this depth that's already being flipped. You can save as, save it to the desktop depth two I have that true okay we can use it here I believe so just upload it here number of inference step 20 condition scale minimum maximum just run this okay this is our origami robot and we have some generations Sometimes you get this abstract looking one, but I like the one that's simpler with a plain background. Okay, so we have some origami ideas of like a robot make a robot. So maybe robot make a Japanese red, uh, Japan, Japan retro style machine. Okay. This is the style that we can choose. Let's replace the depth with our new depth. So, so I'm just clicking on this load layer depth map from files. Just get this. We get the depth now. Set this into SDXL. You can use SDXL Turbo, I think, but I will use SDXL Base. Control, set this depth map into SDXL Control Net diffuser uh, as for the weight set it under you can have you can try 100% but lower it down to 50% or lower and just hit generate so we have our text prompt here 
right this is the positive prompt this is the negative prompt and then we are using depth control net and then so we, we set it we set the weight whether it's closer to our prompt or closer to control which is our depth i set it lower than 50 percent you're gonna get nice result um, if it's too strong on the prompt you lost the depth the shades but in this case still kind of it's using the depth a little bit but it has more freedom that's closer to your prompt so we have this robot being generated this one yeah already we have something here this is the depth this is the result not bad you can say to 30 conditioning let's try actually in this case 0 0.7 rerun it so this is the one that's online from replicate.com so it's using the depth model to generate um maybe there's extra option here that we can use no okay yeah definitely it's closer to our depth and we have this result which is kind of nice you can download save run it again so just keep on running to get different generations if you have it on your computer then you're gonna get the result under the draw things folder so these are some of the origami result i don't quite like this one maybe just delete it so i really like this origami style okay this is a new one yeah I, it's not bad this could be like a concept right you don't need to verbatimly using this as a concept but concept while you are doing 3d model based on this concept it will change anyhow and you have a lot of freedom okay this is something that's a little bit more abstract but you can see how it's using the depth and creating all kind of mecha looking sculpture of robot this i think i made too much here okay this one's yeah the one that's more like a toy i quite like this oh this one more like a plasticine i thought this one also kind of cool I have to sit down and take a look at this and see what else we can generate. Okay, it's, it takes a while to generate one because it's using SDXL base and then it's doing refinement. Refinement on the fly. Okay, let's try plus the scene one, but make this way, way closer to 60s or something. Let's run this again. It's generating 10, 1024 by 1024 based on the depth. So it's taking quite a while. While doing that, you can always come back to your blend file. Okay, this is the... Okay, this is the first one. Look, you can always select one object and then scale explode explode out and maybe this one should be boxes exploding so you can duplicate this select all make them close together kind of like a magnet just a bunch of objects clumping together if it's too many it doesn't look like anything but anyhow let's join them join them together and just mirror control a to reset all the transform so you can mirror it and see just keep rotating this until you're happy with the look by second flip so I quite like it yeah I'm quite happy with this file save as random boxes three hours save the blend before you do anything 
save it again right click convert to mesh remesh this check the resolutions you can make it like that and then make it shade smooth sculpt and use clothes filter inflate okay inflate and deflate So we have a bit more of details for the depth. Save this. Let's go to our render. So delete this, paste it. So once you have the setup ready one time, all you need to do is just to place your new objects. and then hit render save as depth number 3 so let's replace this with our new depth rerun this remember you can always change this prompt to anything maybe robot made of orange peels peels grow arms and legs you can try that so this is our creation so far let's stop this yeah we have something that's closer to our original depth image Okay, uh, we can use this new prompt. Replace the depth. Depth map from files. Just the depth. Make a make a surreal robot made of orange peels. Orange apple peels, peels grows arm and legs. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, this one is booting. Sometimes, yeah, with the replicate, it's booting, but you are using it for free. I think there's a paid version for this, uh, but give it a try, you know, like. All, try all sort of styles that you can add and use different prompts and generate something out of it. This might work with LCM as well. I haven't tried. With the LCM, it's going to be a lot faster to generate an image. If you have if you are confident uh, with your imagination skill, you can look at this depth and you can already kind of doing some drawings on top of this. Yeah, why not? Shift A, Chris Pencil, blank. Draw, right click, radius, increase in maximum strength and start doodling. Uh, the doodle can be placed on the surface. And start drawing on top of this. So. Originally, remember, this is just like a bunch of cube that's on top of each other and you can practice your imaginations and turn this into something that's more like more or less like 3D. I think it's good, good idea, it's good practice. And this is grease pencil, right? You can always mirror this as well. The 
this is a, some kind of cat maybe make it more like fission fission pro kind of eyes this is uh, it could be anything you could look at the example okay this one this is not bad but maybe reduce the weight replace this with cyberpunk map um, this one futuristic let's generate a bunch well okay this one already finished see we got something we can rerun this if it's doodling using grease pencil of course it's just like a kind of like lines on top of 3d objects but just be free you know with your imaginations and adding form into this 2d this is uh, not exactly 2d if you if you look at this if you turn off if you rotate it's actually kind of 3d so let's get back to the camera using zero on the num on the numpad because we are drawing it the depth you know you don't actually need to be drawing from the front view you, you can go back go to the back view and start doodling continue doodling see that this part it looks like it needs that kind of detailing if you are doing like an actual 3d models like a physical one This is like doing it inside Blender and you have an infinite ink basically to draw on top of 3D objects. Okay, it seems like floating a bit because of this offsets too big. That's okay. Okay, this one closer to the surface now I found this kind of relaxing see we got a bit of mecha with a bit of orange kind of infused into it maybe this should be like a apple pear pear run it again We have yeah more interesting and I'm, all, I'm I'm usually only using black ink on the white surface you can use different colors Yeah, you can you can scribble it if you want to it's it's totally up to you you can add a curve and spiral yeah it's a bit it's a bit messy but that's okay I don't know if it's uh, doing this in VR feels even better uh, but I I get used to work on flat monitor or stylus graphic tablet or the iPad Pro so yeah okay let's say I'm happy with that
right click convert to bezier we have curve now oh forgot right click uh, apply this first and then convert to bezier so we don't lose anything now we have the curve only we can resemble the curve clean up and turn this into real thing depth resolution fill caps yeah and then you can reuse this as depth once again if you go back to camera file save as we can re-render this we have new depth with more details right click convert to mesh sculpt and do that again cloth filter inflate deflate oh actually that's interesting i forgot something I forgot to remesh. Apply. Sculpt. Inflate. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See even. This one looks a bit interesting, very alien looking, kind of like combination of organic and mecha style. Render. You can use just the depth, but you can also use it in combination of canny. So save this as depth once again, but I will also keep the original render. Uh, yeah, I can use this as well as Kenny and then so this one's gonna be beauty beauty render and we're gonna use it as Kenny. So we have our objects being generated. Let's stop this. Create new dev map files and also open uh, beauty this is our beauty and use control net canny sdxl canny edge map and just use both to create our make a robot this is our orange oh actually apple Apple make a robot <laughs> replace this with our new depth and then rerun sometimes it's faster online because it, they are using Nvidia while the one that's running offline on our own machine it's a, a bit slower but but also because it's running on your machine you, you have unlimited unlimited uh, credits it takes a while but sometimes I just leave it overnight yeah. that's probably all I want to say but let's see the result that we get this guy if you're if you're happy with this you know you can always paint it let's remove this random go back to material it's under sculpt mode we can use paint start painting okay you yeah. start painting at turn on the turn on the symmetry on the X see you can always blur it using shift as well right click to use different color well wow, look at that that's a lot of fun right from random block to random scribble 
using grease pencil and just I just blew it up you know like inflate it like a balloon we, we got these 3d objects I'm painting on the vertex color by the way you need to bake it in order for this to go out as AR if you want to bring this into iPad and continue there maybe do the UV in, in Blender first and then export it as USDZ and then and then have your 3D sculpt as AR you can see it in physical world okay you can yeah you can get that this one yeah we get the result and this one also is using the candy and so we have more detailed look yeah it's a little bit more detail than before so that's the whole process I think the origami I I, I like the origami and the, this mecha realistic mecha kind of combination of recycled materials definitely lots of ideas here and you just look at it look at it like maybe there are like hundred, hundreds different design and you just and then you start making your own why not so that's the whole process hopefully you find it useful thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time thank you bye